Atlantis Fraser Park. Hey everyone, it's Kate from Wild Tales of where we share about family, travel, and outdoor adventure. Today we are out on a walking adventure right in our neighborhood. Something, of course, that we've been doing a lot lately these past few months, but Today our focus is a little different. Today we are focusing on celebrating and recognizing black people. We are doing that by reading books featuring black people, books featuring black heroes and heroines, and we are doing that today by focusing on the important black figures right here in our neighborhood in the Central District of Seattle. Now we are very lucky to have a rich history of African Americans who have done a lot of important work in our city and in our neighborhood, and we are very lucky to have many many parks that are named for them so what we're doing today is we are going on a walking tour we are visiting as many parks and facilities as we can that are named for Seattle's African American leaders this is part one of this exploration but we hope you'll join us in learning about and recognizing and highlighting the achievements of these important African American leaders in our community <music> So this is Prentice Frazier Park. Prentice Frazier lived right behind here, right behind the playground, which was recently updated actually. So he lived behind the park. And I just wanna give credit to the Seattle Parks Department. They have two write-ups, there's two parts in, in a series that they did last year during Black History Month, where they're highlighting all of the parks that are named for African American leaders in Seattle. According to the Seattle Parks Department, Prentice Frazier was a skilled businessman and he helped support African American entrepreneurship. He started the Seattle Enterprise, which is a newspaper designed to serve black Seattleites. Along with helping others with entrepreneurship, he was, again, a skilled businessman and he worked in real estate and investments. And he lived right here in the Central District. <laughs> to the Meredith Matthews YMCA. This is the YMCA that the kids take swimming lessons at and we come and work out and the kids are involved in lots of activities, basketball and kids club. Anyway, so it used to be called the East Madison YMCA. Now it is named for Meredith Matthews who was the executive director of this branch and did a lot of work in improving it and then went on to um, be a leader in YMCA's in the greater Seattle area. African American history in Seattle's central area, featuring Dr. Homer Harris's life. at Garfield High School. Aww. He's the team captain. That fall he threw two touchdown passes winning the Turkey Day Championship game in front of 25,000. First African American at the University of Iowa in any sport. still be a doctor. He, he died in 2007. Mm -hmm. 
So we just left Homer Harris Park, which is right across from the Meredith Matthews YMCA. And Homer Harris grew up in Seattle and went to Garfield High School, where we're actually headed next. What was he, Bergen? A football player. A very talented football player. And a top athlete in his school, and he went on to the University of Iowa. And he could have played in the NFL, but unfortunately at that time, um, African Americans were not allowed to play in the NFL, so he went on to medical school and became a dermatologist. And he was a dermatologist until the age of 84. And another thing I wanted to add, in case you are local, Homer Harris is a great spot to stop and learn about African American history in Seattle as they have a really informative timeline that's worked into the seating bench area within the park and that has important dates of things that had happened in Seattle's history with respect to African Americans. <laughs> Edgar Evers. our way to Medgar Evers Pool. Medgar Evers is right by Garfield High School. Medgar Evers is a civil rights activist and he did a lot of work in the desegregation in the 1960s but unfortunately he only lived to be about 38 years old. Madrona and we are at Al Larkins Park just off uh, the main business district business district in the Madrona neighborhood and Al Larkins was a very talented musician and also a music teacher for Seattle Public Schools. He played in many amazing jazz bands throughout the city and he even played with Duke Ellington which Bergen was pretty impressed with, right? Very famous. He lived here in Madrona. He spent a lot of time here. He spent a lot of time and energy working with the Madrona community. And so after he died in 1977, the Madrona County Council then voted to name this park after him, this new park after him in hotelier, restaurateur, early supporter of the first African Methodist Episcopal Church, the first person in African descent to own property. 
in East Madison, Seattle. Okay, so we're at the last stop of part one of our tour of Central District Area Seattle Parks, named for prominent African American leaders. And we are at William Grass Park. This is a small park, kind of in the Madison Valley, on the edge of Madison Valley and Madrona. And because I don't want to leave out any of the importance of William Grass, I wanted to read the excerpt from the Seattle Parks and Recreation article. William Gross was an African American pioneer. In 1876, Gross opened a restaurant and hotel on Yesler Way called Our House. Six years later, he bought 12 acres along East Madison Street from Henry Yesler, which became the foundation of the Central District. Gross was one of the founders of the first African Methodist Episcopal Church in Seattle and was one of the wealthiest men in the city at that time. He was known as a generous neighbor who regularly helped those in need. Hey guys, so we are back from our walk. Just a couple blocks from home, it started to rain, so I'm ending this video inside. But thank you for joining us. Thank you for taking the time to learn with us, to learn about these important African-American leaders in our community. I certainly don't have all the answers, and I certainly am not an expert in the right response in what has been happening with discrimination in our country. But I do know that I can start with my family, and that's why we chose to do this walk today. A couple of other things that we're also doing are reading books that are either by African American authors or that feature African American characters. And we're also watching shows and movies that feature African American characters. We're having age appropriate discussions, answering questions, and teaching our kids how to be allies. So stay tuned for part two where we head out on our bikes later on this week and highlight another handful of parks that are named after prominent Seattle area leaders. We will see you next time. I hope you're staying happy and healthy and you are able to get out and have some brave wild adventures.